Hello, welcome in this video. What we're going to do is look at the line integral from the vector field perspective. Remember the vector field is a slope field it used to be called back in your previous calc class where you have a bunch of arrows that represent a vector function. You give me an x and y, I give you an arrow. The arrow is then going to be um, represented by um, a direction and then as far as magnitude, it's going to be hard to actually represent that because some have a larger magnitude than the others. And so we're just going to maybe represent that with uh, bolder arrows. And so here's an example of a vector field. This is, once again, straight from Wikipedia. And the visual now as to what are you measuring when you change perspectives? When you start looking at a vector field line integral as opposed to a scalar function line integral, what are you measuring? Well... Uh, in this video, you'll see an animation that will um, take place. And, and the idea is that um, there's a particle who is on the curve at a starting point and an ending point, And you are calculating the work done by the vector field to move the particle along the path. You're doing a dot product with the vector field and the, um, the, 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 the uh, tangent vector to the curve. Um, the video should play now. So we have our vector field, all right, and we have our curve. If I could pause the video, that would be great. No? Okay. I can't pause the video. That's okay. Um, and so um, we have the, the red vector represents the tangent vector, and it's an accumulated dot product as we traverse throughout the curve. Uh, when the vector field is pointing in the direction, then they're going to be um, parallel to each other. And so the dot product between the vector f and r prime is then going to be um, equal to um, just the magnitude of the, um, the vector field. It's, it's when it's, uh, let's see if I can stop it at the right point. No, I can't start and stop it. All right, so just watch it. I might have to go back and play it again for you so you can see it. But um, watch as the as you go down. Um, watch the watch the dot product value be equal to zero as the vectors are orthogonal to the curve. Can I go back and play that again? I'll just explain, we'll explain that later, but, um, no. Okay, it'll play again. Here we go. So we have a, um, the vector field. We have a curve. We have the, uh, the red vector, who's going to represent the derivative curve uh, down in the circle there. Uh, the blue vector is going to represent the vector field. And we are doing dot products. And the green value is the dot product. Zero, zero under it's negative it could be negative right dot product could be negative and it's all about the angle that you're making with the um with the tangent vector um cosine of the angle is going to be what comes from dot product and so um when the cosine is something that is less uh, when the angle is something between zero and pi over two the cosine is positive but when the angle is something more than that between pi over two and pi then the, uh, the cosine is negative, and so that's why you saw this guy dip below the graph here. Um, and so negative dot product is possibility. We're talking about the net dot product from t equals a to t equals b. Um, the integrals are written with uh, the same integral sign and a c, but inside, though, we have f dot dr. dr is the derivative of your path function r. And... Uh, we're going to write it in this format with uh, the f is a vector who has multivariable functions in it as its i and j, perhaps k components. And those multivariable functions, we're going to call them p and q. All right. And so the p and q come from f. And then as far as dr goes, d, d, r is a vector that has x and y's. Okay. x is the i component and y is the j component. Functions of t. And uh, when we when we take its derivative, we get dx and dy. So if we're dotting, we're going to have p dx and q dy. 
our line angles look different than we had before. Before we had a multivariable function for sure, but it was times ds. This is uh, two multivariable functions, one times dx and one times dy. All right, great. Here's another visual um, straight from Wikipedia again, um, where we have a vector field drawn in. We're gonna have, a, um, the curve won't be drawn in, but at the bottom, what's nice about this uh, video is that you can see the actual um, vector that is closest in, in proximity to the uh, smallest um, uh, along the curve, close to the blue dot there. The blue dot is the particle, and it's going to move along. And at the bottom there, they're going to draw in that vector as you go, and it's going to be plus. You know, it's a dot product. You're not adding vectors, no, but you're saying that, um, I'm dotting the direction vector for the function, the derivative of that, with the uh, vector field. And so I think the video is going to play now. So the curve isn't explicitly marked off. Oh, there it is. At the end, it's finally marked off. And so it's going to replay. Oh, that's great. Oh, it's not going to replay. Okay, let's make it replay by going back. Okay, there we go. All right, larger um, arrows represent a stronger magnitude. And so uh, we're accumulating these vectors dotted with our velocity vector. One more time. All right, great. So we're looking at the dot product of these vectors with the tangent vector to the curve at those distinct points there marked off on the curve. All right, great. So um, that's the visual. Let's go ahead and uh, tell you the steps. And then in the next couple of slides, we'll look at some examples. So let's, let's stay with 2D for now. So you have your two elements, right? Your vector field and your curve. The vector field has these components, P and Q, multivariable functions of X and Y. And C is your curve. And we're going to execute the line integral over the curve of the dot product between F and DR. Let me give you the steps. The first thing is to start with the path, let's say. Parameterize the path. All right, we had a video on parameterizing basic paths. So please go back and watch that if you need to, but you need to come up with the functions g of t and h of t and the boundaries on t that will traverse you exactly along that curve. After you get that path, write it as a vector, put those guys as components in the, in the vector r of t and find the derivative of the path, d, dr. Okay, so just take derivatives, g prime and h prime in a vector. Uh, officially, it's g prime of t dt, and it's h prime of t dt, but we can factor that dt part out. Okay. Now, that's uh, half the battle, right? f dot dr. So what about f? Um, f is going to be this function full of multivariable, a uh, vector function full of multivariable functions, scalar functions. And when we have our parameterization, we can now rip out all the x's and put in g of t. Rip out all the y's and put in h of t. We're rewriting f, we're restricting f to be only on the curve again. Okay. What that's going to then give you is a function in t. Single variable. p is going to be a function just of t. I call it u of t here. q is going to turn into a function just of t. I call it v of t here. And what I call it is f on c. It's f rewritten to only be considering the points that are on the curve. And we take a dot in step four. The dot between step two and three. It'll be u of t times g prime and v of t times h prime. All multiplied by dt. That's what you integrate. Single variable integral as t goes from a to b. Okay, so I've given you a couple visuals from Wikipedia to let you know what you're calculating when we're looking at the vector field viewpoint of a line integral. And I've given you the steps on executing it um, explicitly. Um, let's save the next videos for examples. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Please comment down below, like and subscribe. Reach out to me if you need any help. Um, you can find my webpage, calcoach.com, for extra resources, workbooks, more videos. and. Um, Stay tuned. I'll be sure to uh, see you in the next video.
Take care.